now. Welcome. Welcome to Is Daily Wednesday with the one true Niz and Paul Gordon. And you can see the title of the show right there if you're watching the video. If you're listening to audio, pretend you can see a picture of, of a third or fourth wave feminist with a Harvard logo. And the title says... Hates men for feminists and SJWs. And that's that's going to be our first story of the day. But before we get to our first story of the day, I heard something. Yes, Don. Yes, Don. This is live. This is live. We're doing it live. We're always live. <laughs> We're living live. <laughs> we'll do it live. I heard I heard news today. I heard that, that you went down to the uh, to the local uh, pharmacist. You picked yourself up some blue sleep pills. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to sleep. You're blue pilling it. What's going right. on? Right. I'm blue pilling it. You're blue I've come to the, it. I've, I've, I have come to a personal conclusion, and it, my personal conclusion is that uh, the further left that we allow uh, politics in general to to pull collectively to pull the country collectively to the left, the more difficult this is going to be for us to be able to actually, uh, for us to be able to actualize uh, a stateless society. Um, so we need to pull it back to the right so we can kind of <laughs> get... I'm sorry. Well, I, that's... Uh, you know, I said, what do they all right say? That you're getting red-pilled? You're getting And then you told me I'm, I'm going you're back to sleep so I can... I, can, I want to taste the steak, damn it. What's, yes, exactly. <laughs> I want to taste the state. So right. Well, so yeah. Me, all, so, a lot of this, Paul. A lot of this had stemmed. I mean, I kind of had these, uh, uh, you know, little little tidbits here and there where I would, you know, start thinking stuff like this. But what really sealed the deal for me was that State of the Union address uh, last week, um, where you know you had. Here's the, the the this is the thing that blew my mind the most. Okay, you would think that. The lowest black unemployment rate in history is something that every black person, whether they were a Republican or a Democrat, would say, stand up and say, yeah, that's great, fantastic. That's history being made right there. Nope, you'd be wrong because they sat with contempt and they didn't clap. They didn't applaud. They didn't nothing. Just stone cold faces filled with contempt uh, same thing for the lowest uh, Hispanic uh, unemployment rate in history. Same, same deal there. You know, uh, stone cold faced, no applause, no emotion whatsoever, nothing but contempt. And I started to have this, uh, you know, this this revelation that this is the moment that right the, the left, Go ahead. that the Democrats have actually been exposed for who they truly, truly are. The despicable commiecrats. These terrible human beings that they actually are, the veil was lifted and exposed for everyone to see. And, uh, you know, then, uh, of course, you see all this, uh, you know, like our, our top story for tonight with this uh, craziness that's going on at I Harvard. I picked this just for you. I knew this was a story got, that you'd love. I, I, I mean, you, 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 you've, you. Got, you've got legislators in California who are, who are, you know, threatening to put people who are they're trying to pass legislation to put people in jail to lock people in cages over not using the correct pronouns if you're a healthcare worker and you've got a 70 year old transvestite or trans mentally ill person that believes that they are you know a a, a female turtle uh, and you don't happen to refer to them as your turtle kin, uh, you, they, they want to put you in prison. And when you have stuff like that going on, it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to see, man, you gotta, it's gotta go back. <laughs> we gotta come back a little bit this way, a little bit more to the right before, because the, okay. these are not the kind of people you can reason with when they okay. want to lock you up <laughs> turtle kin. that that's not someone you can reason with. Okay. I think that you're looking at this in a way that uh, you're ascribing values and expecting values from political players, from uh, political factions, from political tribes that they absolutely do not have. There, 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 there's no morality here. There's no decency here. There's no judge justice here. Not on the right or on the left. What you're seeing, what you saw from... 
the uh, yes, you did see that comment I see from John Smith. I was going to pass by it, but John Smith, John Smith, <laughs> hashtag not my comedian, uh, who said at one point in this country, all blacks had jobs. John Smith, I'm sorry, you're never going to be able to run for president now. Your your dreams of political fortune are over right there. But what you're seeing, what you saw in that uh in that state of the union, it wasn't, it wasn't a reflection. Oh, they're so, they're so vulgar that they can't even cheer black low unemployment. It was a calculated strategy. And in this case, the strategy, I don't think in the end is going to work, but they thought it would. And that's all that matters. They thought, listen, we need to invalidate. We need to continue the process of invalidating, demonizing, ostracizing, isolating the president of the United States of America. We cannot give him any legis legitimacy. This is kind of the, the no platform uh, strategy where you just don't let anybody speak, you know, and it's a strategy. Right. It's a political power play that is done only when you feel like you have the power to do so. So, well, like, and you, and you know, uh, I made I made a point on uh, on Friday night on the Torchwood Report on LRN. Uh, I made a point uh, Friday night that uh, everybody was wondering what it was that Nancy Pelosi was chewing on that that entire time because it was like an out. What was it? Eighty minutes of nonstop her I chewing on something. That, that what it. what she was what she was chewing on was her contempt. That was the <laughs> contempt for the American people that she had a mouthful of that she was chewing on. She and, was playing uh, a role, dude. That's all she was doing. She was playing a role of 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 contempt, of of being before Donald Trump and trying to establish a complete lack of respect and disregard for Donald J. Trump. This is purely a political strategy. That's it. And I have I won't say I have no doubt, because I don't know absolutely, but I have little doubt that if the, the the type of power that the Republicans have versus the type of power that the Democrats have, if it was reversed, that you wouldn't see the Democrats and the Republicans flipping. And you would see the Republicans calling for hate speech laws against people that dared say Christianity was not the true religion or hate speech laws against uh, people who said that women should have the right to have an abortion. Now, I say that as I'm a pro-lifer. I'm not a state on state based pro-lifer, but in principle, I'm a pro-lifer. Uh, but what you're seeing is a reflection that right now the Republicans have control of the House, of the Senate, of the presidency. The bureaucracy is loaded with progressives. At all levels of government. I mean, at all levels. I mean, local government. I don't care even if you're in a conservative district. More chances than not, I'll even say nine chances out of ten, the bureaucracy that's being run by your local government is in the hands of progressives. And they absolutely control the cultural gatekeepers the major cultural gatekeepers they even control the major corporate gatekeepers so they can set the tone as far as what is culturally permissible and what is not and that's why they're applying this this cultural assault on free speech i really don't have any doubt why don't i i won't say again not any doubt. i really don't have any i have little doubt that if the the conservatives had cultural control, that they would not be doing similar things to the left that the left is now doing to them. This isn't a left-right thing. This is, it, this is a, I don't want my guys targeted for uh, gun assault by government officials that will force them to do stuff that they don't want to do. But I want to use guns to force your guys to do stuff that they don't want to do. Don, we don't have a number to call in. So uh, you're falling right now for a left-right paradigm that doesn't exist. You're simply looking at two tribes fighting for power. That's it. And neither one of them is going to take you any closer to liberty. 
Not the Republicans, not the Democrats, not the conservatives, not the progressives. Neither one of them. Unless the well, only, I still you, I still subscribe to the idea to the idea that there is no left right paradigm. It's left left. It's you know th- this far. It's this far left and this far left. You, you know what I mean? It's 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 two feet to the left and three hundred miles to the left. There is no real right anymore uh, when it comes to American politics because you basically have. You know, commiecrats and and <laughs> and and and, and uh, socialist Republicans. Uh, that's that's what you're. That's what we have on the table right now. What I'm saying is we have to bring it back to the right before there we can no get right, dude. There's no right. I'm telling you, there is no right. There, there. What are you? What are you going to well, take I, it I back to? Within, with now, within the hierarchy, within the hierarchy of the parties. Uh, there is no such thing as the right, but I think among the the, the average everyday Describe person, right. what is what is right to you? What what is the right? The uh, you know the uh, the con- conservatism, I guess you could say, of the past. You know, the, the Constitution guys, the m- m- parchment, the Constitution, people, the first the uh, Article One, Section Eight, which gives the government. Uh, unrestricted power to tax you as it sees fit. The Constitution, that Constitution. Well, sure, yeah, still that Constitution. I mean, that's <laughs> further that's further to the right than we're than we're dealing with the people right now. I mean, you saw the Democrats are sitting there. Wait, they don't wait, want. Are you, no I want mean, you, under, you understand your, that a government your, that has the 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 legal power to tax you any way that it sees fit de facto owns everything. That's like. That's hard on communism, big time communism, and that's the Constitution. So what are you I'm getting back to? That the Constitution humpers are are way way more uh, likely to be reasoned with, I guess you could say that than you know than I a, a know. far. I don't know. It it depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about free speech, they're fine. But the minute that you start talking about burning flags and not standing up for pledges, their reasonableness kind of goes out the window. They become just as militant yeah, and frothy. Into, and, right, but that, right. Now, and, and, and now you, we're getting blurred lines and stuff into nationalism because that's that's nationalism there. You know, and I guess it kind of. It can kind. I guess it can go hand in hand. I I, I guess, but it goes it, it goes both ways. There's nationalist leftists too that are the same way, that are muffled. I'm, I'm I'm just saying there is no getting to the right or getting to the left that helps the cause of of heading towards a a, a non coercive governance model. I think what gets us to non coercive governance models is power, pure power and power comes in many forms and one of the most powerful forms of power i think is demonstrable so we have so much technology that's coming on board today that it is enabling us to begin to take care of ourselves amongst free associations and to do it in ways that the the coercive enterprise the government can't track us that's that's becoming right, well, more at, and more at, of a reality. That's a far right, more to me powerful path. Look at, crypt, and look at it, cryptocurrency. I mean, that's that's, that's what, what cryptocurrency. Yeah. That that's what cryptocurrency has has demonstrated is that all of this can work without them, and that's why they're terrified of it. And, and it's it's bringing those alternatives to the table, making these working alternatives that show people that hey, listen, this way is so much better and easier than their way. That more people will want to get on board with it, absolutely. But I think, uh, you know, and, and I think in order to get there, we still well, have to bring. Who's standing up right now and calling for a war on the quote unquote deep web, which I call the Liberty Web, and it's calling to create a whole new special task force to go in and stop the Liberty Web from exchanging value between individuals? Who's doing that? Right. Well, that's that's it's that not a progressive. Socialist. It's not a that Democrat. Is, it is progressive. It is a no. It is it's a, a Republican. Socialist Republican. It's Jeff Sessions. That's I mean, that's all like, you have, though. They're all socialists. That John McCain is is you know he's but, not uh, he's not a, 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 a go ahead. Here's my point. They've always been socialist. 
since the founding of the United States of America, they've always been socialists. They've just been maybe maybe they've been socialists that that couldn't fully take the amount of power that they can now. But they've always been the socialists. The, the the Constitution was written in such a way that as power could be taken, they could have the mythological rule of law help make it easier for them to take that power with with without having to use as much actual force to do it. That's it. So you're. I think you're swimming in a sea of crap and you saw like a, a crap nugget going by that had a peanut in it. And you're like, hey, that peanut. <laughs> no, that peanut looks pretty good. And that other piece of crap, it doesn't even have a peanut in it. All right. There's not even corn in that one. <laughs> there ain't, ain't even. Well, I don't even. <laughs> I only like corn on the cob and I definitely don't like. Uh, Post digested corn. <laughs> <laughs> I I I think. See, I I think that we didn't plan on this happening. By the way, folks, but you know, spontaneous order stuff happens. <laughs> but I I think that. I mean, I I feel it. Like I see what the left does, and I and what really infuriates me about the left is how morally superior they act and they try to take the moral high ground when they have advocated for thuggery the whole time. They didn't have crap to say when Obama was killing children. Now all of a sudden they're bon bothered by, by Trump's wars. I was bothered you know, by Obama's wars and I'm a bothered by Trump's wars. You know, I, you know what really bugs me? You know what really grinds my gears about millennials? Did you ever watch any of these any of these videos that they put up just explaining things to you? They millennial explain things to you. They don't it, it's like this they, they almost talk that like like you don't know. Like as if you know, if 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 I just explain this to you one more time and I use my special millennial explaining voice, that you know, once you understand, you'll just get it. And no, it's not that I don't get it. It's that I think you're an idiot, and I don't agree with you. I, I don't think that most people are persuadable through ideas. Some are. I think very few are ap actually persuadable through ideas. And John Smith says, corn on the cob is just corn. Call it corn off the cob otherwise. You know what, John? I'm going to stick with what I said, okay? But what, what, what you're seeing, see... I believe that what you're seeing is the right is dealing from its position of strength and its position of weakness. And the left is dealing from its position of strength and its position of weakness. See, I remember, I remember the 80s. And I'm telling you in the 80s, the Republicans sounded a lot more like the Democrats do today. And the Democrats sound a lot more like the Republicans do today because it was the Republicans that were saying this whole free speech thing has got to have its limitations. It's insane. Got to think about national security. You know, you got you got to think about decency, you know, uh, while the Democrats were saying, no, 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 no. Free speech for all, man. I mean, that was their big thing. It was like, that's the ACLU came about. To, well, I mean, it's a commie organization, but still free speech, free and 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 what you're seeing is it was never about free speech. It was because for that period of time, culturally, the Republicans still, even though there were mostly Democrats even back then that were the gatekeepers, still, culturally, even in the 80s, the Republicans, the conservatives, I would say they still kind of had, had the sway. So... Uh, they were dealing from a position of, I, I already have the cultural backing. So I know if I say that you're a worthless piece of garbage and that's how I'm going to shut you down, that I'm probably going to have the cultural sway behind me to do it. So I'm going to do it. And that means I'm going to be less inclined to care about free speech because that doesn't empower me. That's not a tool that helps me. And the Democrats didn't have that. So they were like, free speech, you got to give us a chance. It's kind of like, you know, before the, 
when the Democrats were first entering into the colleges, it was like, you got to open up the colleges. You got to have free and open and representational. And you got to have, you can't just have conservative voices. And as soon as they got into the college and as soon as they got into positions of power, what did they do? They <laughs> right down. now. Right, exactly. Now we now we have our top story, what was supposed to be our top story oh, yeah, for the why night. Don't we go into this that? is how we get in this is how we segue right into Harvard University banning single sex clubs, but only targeting men's clubs, reclassifying women's single sex clubs as what what are the gender organizations. Let, let, let me do let what? me do the bump. <laughs> I'm gonna do the bump real quick. Bump it. And we're, we're gonna bump this. Here we go. What are the big stories, the big headlines everyone else is focused on? And what, if anything, can we, who pursue the power to act without threat or action of physical force, learn from these stories? This is Newsfire, where we set your news on fire. So you got to hear the bump this time, right? I did, yeah, yeah, we fixed yeah. it. You got to hear, set your news I fire. <laughs> so, you want to read this, or you want me to? What do you want to do? No, go okay. ahead. You go ahead. You go ahead. All right. I I tell you what. I'll read the part that I wrote, and then you can cover the other part. So this is what I wrote: defying all common sense and choosing instead to continue to pursue a social engineering plan that cuts dramatically against basic human reality. Harvard is now banning all single-sex organizations, but with a catch. <laughs> there's, there's always that catch. It's always so, a catch. So, so female organizations will become gender-focused, while male organizations will face ongoing sanctions to force them out of existence. So somehow, female organizations are now gender. I don't know what that means, but, but in other words, it appears that all female groups are fine, but all male groups are not fine. Uh, and 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 then I added this, and I think this is this is witty this is witty comedy here. Okay, this is good stuff here. Some very stupid parents are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to send their kids to a school that has decided to put social engineering ahead of actually helping to prepare your kid to prosper in the real world. That's not funny at all, is it? Not really. That's, that's not funny, but but I I'm really looking forward to the lawsuits because I know they're going to happen, as it is basically now openly discriminating against males, and uh, and there you go that that's my part. Can you not take it away? Here's Good what job. I have to say: Do you want secret societies and secret organizations? <laughs> because this is how you get them. Harvard, I, what are you thinking? Can I? Turn you want my like what? The voice? Skull and Bones too? Can I do my Is Archer voice? Do it. Do you want secret societies? Because this is how you get secret societies. <laughs> it really is. It Archer. really is. I mean, this is this is absolutely, absolutely unbelievable. So uh, all male organizations are going to be slapped with sanctions. So the sanctions apparently... Uh, they include like you know if if you belong to one of these uh, uh, male oriented clubs, then you can't uh, uh, you can't uh, do certain things like uh, uh, take a leadership role in in organized sports on campus. I can't imagine that they're. I mean, what kind of sports do they have at Harvard anyway? What is it Who like water polo? They? The water polo team. I. I I, I think that the word Cricket. cuck is overused, but who are the cuckerific students that are actually putting up with this garbajo? Who are they? You're 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 going to Harvard, okay? Let's pretend that <laughs> right. Harvard really is what people have always thought it was. It's supposed to be like for smarty smarts. How is it that smarty smarts are looking at this and say, "Oh yeah, yeah, we really, we really appreciate the way that you're controlling us and and controlling our free associations. This is great. 
This is preparing us for the real world. This is preparing us to live in a representational republic. This is how you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot. You know, for some work, reason, I, have. for some reason, I, I have this image in my head of like this, uh, this, this large classroom at Harvard, and it's, you know, it's, it's a Thursday afternoon at three thirty. And uh, you got about five minutes before the gender studies class uh, starts, and all these dudes are piling in that thought they were going to get into this gender studies class to get laid, and realize like <laughs> there are no women here. What do we do? I've got wow. an idea. I got idea. I got an idea. As they I, I push got the idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this it is this be. is terrible. It, it's, and you it's... know, man, this 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 goes right along with that whole. Uh, you know the 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 leftist takeover of uh, of higher education. This well, goes right along power, with it. And what do you do with the power? You 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 tend to use it, and so they're using it now. What I'm saying is, I believe that if conservatives had the power, they'd be enforcing similar things. It wouldn't be the, the, the gender thing is not their thing. It would be something else. It would be. Associating with women who are pregnant. What's that? <laughs> Mandatory sandwich making classes. Yeah, yeah something they were, <laughs> or associating with uh, women who are pregnant out oh, of wedlock. <laughs> whatever, whatever it would be, they would have their own cultural <laughs> police enforcing their mores on others by hook or by crook. And, but, but the thing that wasn't like that before, to my knowledge, was it like that before? I mean, were were women's organizations banned at one point in time? I mean, you had mentioned, you know, the uh, well, the, there, the cultural were, shift I don't know. happened toward the end of the '80s, and the way that the culture was was more geared toward Republicans during the '80s. I yeah, mean, during was it in the '80s, ban? it was shifting, but yeah, it I mean, was still ban on women's organizations. Like, if you're a woman and you belong to like the Pink Sisterhood, that's it. You can't. There's no woman's volleyball for you. I mean, it wasn't like that. It, this stuff has only it, happened. It, it, in okay, left so you. Okay, it wasn't like that there, but but I mean I don't know exactly what the campuses were like in well the late eighties and eighty nine. I went to college, so I guess I know a little bit. I was on I was on a community college campus, and then I was I commuted to Penn State, so I I, I never lived I never had that dorm experience, but my my experience. Uh, I mean, I remember the 80s. There were just certain things that you didn't talk about in public. You you didn't talk about abortion, for instance. And you didn't, uh, and and even even back then, dude, dude, try and try and stand up and challenge the patriotism and the flag and and even like I'm a Christian. I'm a diehard, full believing Christian. But still, back then, if I were to stand up. Even in a college campus, and I were to openly say Christianity is a fraud, a hoax, a lie, whatever, I would have gotten some serious, serious blowback from that. Probably from, uh, maybe my colleges were more conservative, but probably from the colleges themselves. There was there was cultural pressure, and it was the reverse. Except, I mean, again, in the 80s, it was shifting already. But my my... I don't know what was it like. Yeah, to look at what were college campuses like in the fifties. In the fifties, in colleges, campuses, they expected men to have their head shaved. You know, you had long hair. You don't have long hair, man. They had rules against stuff like that. They were very strict, as far as I know. Uh, and then you know, the sixties, they said, you know, that's why you had the the the, the songs in the yeah, 50s, like long hair, beautiful, whatever. Yeah, it was like a rebellion because right. it was like you had these social mores. You had to think a certain way, act a certain way. If a woman stood up and said that I was raped, absolutely she would not have been believed. No way. No freaking way whatsoever. There was a patriarchy. <laughs> there, I said it. There was a patriarchy. <laughs> what? Uh, but then the degenerates came out of the woodwork and they changed all that and now we're at the point where the degenerates now have gotten to the point now where it's, now instead they're of a patriarchy let's have a matriarchy it's not even what a matriarchy it's degeneracy is what it is i mean this is crazy i mean i, I don't have any issue with 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 uh, with a uh I, I can't even say feminist because none of them are like this 
there's a huge, huge difference between you know pushing for you know equal treatment of the sexes, and the, and and there's a there's a huge difference between that. And, you know, we, we need to uplift women, but at the same time, while we uplift women, we have to degrade men. No, we don't. We don't. Ha- that's not how it has to be. It doesn't have to be that way at all. But that's the way they want it. They want it to be, you know, well, uh, I, I don't know, r- sexual reparations, I guess you could say. I don't know what the what the heck else to call it. It's uh, uh, it's 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 stupid and it's reprehensible. I mean, this is idiotic. Well, it's. It's a victim ideology uh, that relies on its victimhood for its special elevated status. You know, you talk about the victimhood Olympics. There's a hierarchy of victimhood, and they're they're scrambling to get to the top of that victimhood Olympic uh, podium. And uh, the game there is, it's 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 about you. You just described cultural Marxism. That's what you just described. It's it's or, this view that there is simply the oppressor and the oppressed, and there is there there is no in between, no equality. You're either one or the other. And in this particular instance, with this uh, story coming out of Harvard University, obviously the way that they're looking at this is through the lens of cultural Marxism, through postmodernism, and they're looking at this as if you know, well, we have to ban men's clubs because men are the oppressors. And we have to allow these women's uh, organizations, and they can't be penalized because they are the oppressed, and so they can't have the same, uh, you know, the, uh, the same consequences for engaging in the same type of activities. Let's play some lingual acrobatics and maybe fool some people. I guess some very, stu- I guess maybe they're fooling the same people who are eating Tide Pods. I really couldn't <laughs> tell you who they think they're fooling by saying that these clubs are gender focused. I mean, absolutely not. This is the exact, uh, the exact same thing. It's just uh, you're allowing it on one hand, and you're penalizing, you know, someone on the other hand for doing the exact same thing. It's crazy. Well, I I haven't quite formulated in my head. I'm still working out, working it out. But I have a nascent notion that. This isn't really cultural Marxism. This isn't postmodernism. Cultural. My my theory is that things like cultural Marxism, postmodernism, whatever ideologies the right uh, develops, whether it's, I mean, some perverted form of uh, individualism, usually, uh, that the ideologies, the philosophical justifications, if you will, emerge from a necessity to frame a justification around your strengths and weaknesses. So whatever you happen to be good at and whatever you happen to be bad at, you'll gravitate towards the camp that will allow you to exercise your advantage and uh, penalize those who might uh, have an advantage over your weaknesses. So I think that people who tend to uh, who tend to be really good at passive aggressive techniques <laughs> are probably much more likely to fall into the SJW cultural Marxist kind of camps and they find ideologies that justify their passive aggressive ways and their their idea is that in order for me to be advanced i must lessen someone else and i have a view that it's a very finite world finite resources and i got to get uh what i can from those who have an unfair advantage over me and their unfair advantage is just that Rather than passive aggressive, maybe they're just a little bit more capable of of performing. So they're the folks that would, you know, they they might be better at business. They might, uh, I don't know, they might be better organizers. I don't know. I haven't quite uh, worked it out in my head yet. It's this theory that I'm working on. I'm still in the baby stages of it, uh, <laughs> but but in essence, the 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 what I'm trying to look at is rather than looking at cultural Marxism, postmodernism, individualism, all that, what what are the 
what are the strengths and weaknesses that I see in these in in aggregate among these these quote unquote tribes? And I mean it's it's not all black and white like that because to a certain extent some people are in tribes for no other reason than they grew up with that identity. I mean, I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan and like diehard Philadelphia Eagles fan. And when the Eagles won the Super Bowl, yeah, I cried like a baby. I don't, I don't care. Did, I don't care what you did think you, I did am. You, but did I did you tear that. down any light poles, flip over any cars? I, I was quiet. I was. I, I couldn't <laughs> believe how I react. There's absolutely no logical reason whatsoever that I should have any emotional connection to the Philadelphia Eagles. So I grew up with them. So I think that there are people that are in the conservative camp or the progressive camp that are there not because of uh, it may enhance their strengths and protect their weaknesses, but because, yeah, Don, you can bite me. He said that was <laughs> fake news, Pat's one. But because they grew up with it. Like, I grew up as a Democrat, so I was a Democrat <laughs> for, for a long, long time, even though really progressivism doesn't really match my strengths and weaknesses. Eventually, I found my way out of progressivism. And I became a conservative, a hardcore conservative. And I think conservatism kind of matches my strengths and weaknesses. And, and after a while, I, I just determined that, uh, that the games that they were playing, I didn't want to participate in them at all. So I crossed over. And now I'm neither a Democrat or a Republican. And I'm not a libertarian. I'm just a dude. I'm just a dude that just wants to be dude. the hell alone. I am a left the hell aloneer. That's pretty much what what I am. And Don says you still are. No, nope, no, nope, I'm not a conservative, not at all. So, so I mean, there's myriad reasons why they're in the camps, but I think for the most part, I think a lot of folks are in those camps because of the power that they derive from it, and that's it. I think that's it for the most part. You want to get to the next story? Sure. Let me just pop this one thing out here, right? Oh, I think a lot of the, I, I think a lot of, the, I think a lot of college age students uh, reside on the left uh, because they've been indoctrinated into the left over, you know, however many years of uh, of public education. They, they've been indoctrinated. It's been drilled into their heads. Uh, this is what they believe, and then they get in these little circles, and they realize that you know maybe you know some guys can get laid by uh, by saying certain things and playing certain lines uh, along that to the uh, politically active females and so they try that but they have no clue what they're what 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 they believe what they think what they're saying they have no clue it's just it's regurgitated none, none there's no thought put into any of it at all same thing for conservatives most conservatives just spit the party line I just wonder how many people are conservatives and or progressives because of the particular circles that are in that that gets them laid. I don't know. <laughs> That's another factor. <laughs> the laid factor is always right. right. One. That sounds like a Facebook <laughs> poll. That's what that, that sounds does. like. Wow. It sounds like a Facebook poll. Yeah. So, okay, I'll play the bump for the next segment. We're just going to move on. Is it only a matter of time before the robots enslave us all and turn us into factories that supply the lubrication for their moving parts? Well, maybe it's just around the corner. Skynet recovers stories of dystopian tech for the walls and for the pondery. Yeah. Did you recognize that voice? Well, you, you don't know that voice. Do you know who that was? I know who that was. Who was it? I know who that was. That was your daughter. Yep. That was I know, I know. That was me daughter. Uh, she, her, You're gonna way, have to hold my hand. You're gonna have to hold my hand through this story because when I click on the link in the show notes, it takes me to a totally different story. Wow, it takes you. Yeah. To, so, uh, oh man, I don't know. I checked these too. Okay, don't yeah, don't worry. Okay. Uh, it, it did it for that's me okay. too. Just hold my so, hand. So the title of the story, folks, is. China to have AI uh, run killer subs. Let me send a link to you, Niz, 
Mr. Nismodo. I'll send a link to you mm. here as soon as it freaking comes up. I'll send a link through uh, Facebook. The book of face. Facebook yes. messages. The book hey, I'm of the faces. There. I'm prepared. You sent me a message on Facebook. It says, I'm on here where you be. I be here. <laughs> right here. There you hey, go. There. So, All right. So every once in a while, what happens? I, I do stuff in Excel spreadsheets. It helps me. I go through like, well, I got a process. But sometimes for some reason, I don't know how it happens, but the links get put in the wrong places. I, I hey, don't even understand hey, how just it a, happens. Just another heads up for you. When I click on download the latest headlines you have, you may have missed podcast, 20 minutes of headlines, uh, it comes up that this account has been suspended. What? <laughs> I'm telling you. Holy moly. I'm telling you. There you go. Here. Here. Whoa. I don't know if you uh -oh. can see it. Okay. That just know. happened recently. That yeah, just so. happened because I just tested this not too long ago. So this is uh, – I'll fix that. Don't worry. Right now that link doesn't work, but uh, I will fix it. I know what's going on. I know what's going on, but it has nothing to do with our story. <laughs> No. Are you ready? No. That was I was just derailing. I I picked this story for you. I thought that you would enjoy this. Oh, this is a great one. Right. So I'm I, I'll I'll do my part and then you do the bottom part. Right? You ready? Sure. Yeah. Why not? China has an unmanned AI-driven nuclear sub in the works that has nothing is relax. Has absolutely nothing to do with Skynet, really. <laughs> You're just you're just reaching there, buddy. You're just reaching. <laughs> so sending out an armed nuclear powered submarine in the charge of AI seems perfectly reasonable. Uh, I mean, really, you're talking about an armed nuclear powered submarine. What the heck could go wrong there? I don't think anything. And and by the way, just a random thought here. Just a random thought. I welcome my robot overlords. I just I just want to I just want to add that and I encourage others unrelated to the story of course to to publicly proclaim this on their social medias where may, maybe maybe put a flag out in front of your house that says I welcome my robot. <laughs> I love robots. Overlords. I love robots. <laughs> I heart robots. Please, <laughs> robots, please rule me. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my! The best okay, part, the best part of this uh, entire article from Newsweek, which I, I'll, I'll get into this a little bit, but I have to bring this immediately to your attention. Okay, we are talking about nuclear attack submarines controlled by artificial intelligence, and the researcher in charge of this project said, "Though a submarine has enormous power of destruction, its brain is actually quite small." <laughs> that makes that makes me feel so much better about this. That's, Thanks for that good, tidbit. You're in good hands. <laughs> you're not even in hands. Right. <laughs> right. So according to Newsweek, uh, senior scientists confirmed that China is building an artificial intelligence-powered nuclear submarine uh, that can think for itself. Uh, according to a researcher involved with the program who requested anonymity due to the se uh, sensitive nature of the project, the AI augmented submarine with its quote, its own thoughts would reduce the commanding officer's workload, eliminate human error, and give China's Navy a competitive edge in underwater battles, as reported by the South China Morning Post. Its own That's thoughts. That's quality. Its own thoughts. Its own I wonder thoughts. what it could be thinking in that quite small brain. <laughs> well... You think about have you heard the story of the of the Russian? Oh, let me. I'm gonna try and get that. It's like Russian, you know, Google, Google had its deep thought. Russian that saved the world. Let me find this guy. I gotta get him. You know how Google's so, deep thought had like they thought that like they were gonna turn this AI on and it was gonna do profound things, and then they found out that it spent days on end just watching cat videos on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. This is somewhere is floating around the water. Me Chinese, me play joke, me put pee pee in your coke. <laughs> me put nuclear bomb in your butt, <laughs> and your butt is New York City. <laughs> Gosh, that's crazy. Stanislav Petrov, a former Soviet military officer known in the West as the man who saved the world for his role in averting 
a nuclear war over a false missile warning at the height of the Cold War uh, has died. He died September 20th, 2017. Now, why do I bring him up? If it was an AI in charge of them, their missiles, we'd be dead. We'd be dead. <laughs> it Petrov would be fallout. Had enough human common sense to say, oh, "Hold on, there. Hold on a minute. You know, I love my family. <laughs> don't want to. <laughs> don't want to see the burnt toasties there. The AI is like, you know, must complete task. <laughs> it's destroy all humans." It's not, whether it wants to destroy all humans, whatever. It's it's not going to have that hesitation that maybe sometimes you'd want to have. So if it was an AI-powered sub, I have little reason to believe that any of us would be here today. And honestly, well, no, I don't want to say honestly. Maybe that's not a bad thing. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I don't want to do that. So yeah. well, here, here, here's the question. Here, this is the million dollar question: Is does the AI? I mean, obviously, from from that article, it's not like it's just, uh, you know, this robot sub that's roaming around the seas, armed with nuclear weapons that can decide when and when when to launch and when not to launch. Uh, obviously, from the article, there is a crew. There is a crew still aboard. So, I mean, it do, does this AI have launch capabilities? Can it decide, like, well, screw these people? I don't know. And, okay, it's a hop, skip, and a jump from this to totally unmanned. I mean, really. You're going to have, like, I had this scenario worked out in my head some time ago. I, was, I don't know if I was under the influence of, of certain, uh, I'm going to say, enhancement material i'll say that uh but i had the scenario in my head because i was thinking about drones and this was before drones this was well there was a hint of them uh this is this is back around 2003 2004 i had the scenario in my head of uh how there would be this evolution of robot wars and eventually it would like it would really be a contest between nanobots swarming at one another and the one side just trying to get some nanobots through to get into everybody's bodies and mess them up. That's how the world ends, folks. It ends with tiny nanobots fighting in a swarm and a few get through, probably on both sides, leaving the world swarming with nanobots. That's, that's where I got to. So th this You're is watching that show. <clears throat> you were watching that show Revolution, weren't you? Why? I know. I, I saw the first season of Revolution. What? I don't. I know. I, actually, not even the whole season. I worked like, I got bored after the first, at like the six episodes. I was like, eh, I don't like where this is going. Why? What oh, it got crazy. In the... It got crazy, and then it got canceled because J.J. Abrams went to work on Star Trek. So, what happened? How did it get crazy? Uh, the fat guy from Google. He. Uh... Oh, yeah. Like oh, he had like a mental link with like these nanobots and could like burst things into flames and stuff. It was, uh, it was pretty That's cool. Pretty cool. I want to like, what was that movie from like the eighties? Firestarter. Wasn't there a movie? Wasn't yeah. Drew Barrymore? Drew Barrymore. The Firestarter. Yeah. Drew yeah. Barrymore. Firestarter. Fire I was yeah. like, she was That's... just a kid, little kid. She was still a little kid. Yeah. Little. That was pre-hot Drew. That was pre-hot Drew. She eventually became hot Drew. I don't know if she's post hot Drew now. Let me go look. Hold on. I think this is relevant. Are you going to see if she's a wreck? <laughs> I want to see if she's she's entered Let's... post hot. Now, don't get me wrong. Sure it's not just because she's, a train she's wreck. older. Because there are is some she... some. Okay, let's just say because is, is she a train wreck? Okay, let's go. Here we go. No, oh, no, that's not big enough. Okay, is that most recent? Okay, here that looks like. A recent one, so let's let's go to that. And now I'm gonna I'm not gonna say anything. Has she entered post hot or not? Here we go. All right, you can see it there. Well, I can see it. Uh, you can. See I don't know if you can see it, Mister Nismoto. Else see. But everyone I'm else say, can see it. Me, there's a delay uh, of what I can see on the screen. You got to see it now, right? That's no, not there, there yet. Not I'm gonna say. Sure. Well, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, spanning time. I'm spanning time. That's a, the Route Six. I'm um, uh, Buffalo 66 movie reference. If you haven't <laughs> that, seen Buffalo 66, that, 
What there's no saying? way that that's what. There's no way that that's her in 2018. No that way. That is that is Drew. Oh, she's got like 70. Nah, she ain't 70. She's like my age. Actually, she's a little younger than me. She's like mm. 40s. How old is how old is Drew Barrymore? Let's see. Drew Barrymore, born 1975, 42. Is she 70? What the heck? Where are you getting that she's 70? This explains everything. This explains your whole we got to get back to the right thing. You've lost track of how to do math. That's why you can't do basic math. So I would say that she's she's still in Drew Bear. She's not entered post Hotville. She's averted the Hollywood train wreck. Yeah, she's still she's still a. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this delicately. She's a, she's a fine looking woman. She's a fine looking <laughs> woman. Is that delicate? Is that? Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm more than. Hey, you want to check out a dude? Let's let's. So we're not sexist. Let's judge a dude. Think of a dude that was hot in the '80s. Oh oh oh, oh Jan Michael Vincent. I already know the answer to this. And he was also in the movie Buffalo 66. So I, I got that reference in there. It was, I got it was two... also on an episode of Rick and Morty. Oh, was he? Okay. It was, okay, a, it was a movie. Okay. Dan Michael gonna... Vincent. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. It's going to take Are me five ready? minutes to show so up on my end. Has he entered post-hot Vincent or not? I think many of you already know the answer to this. Oh, where he's he? got a train wreck. Here we go. All righty. He's up there. I'm going to span time. I'm spanning time. I'm giving this moto. Have you, did you ever seen the movie Buffalo 66, by the way? I have not, sir. Oh, my gosh. You got to see it. It's uh, Vincent Gallo. Christina Ritchie's in it. Who's, by the way, she has she, she's still in Ritchie Hot. And she actually had a pre-hot Ritchie. When she was just a kid, she did Adam's Family Values, and and then she entered into Richie Hot, and I think she's still in Richie Hot pretty solidly. But in Buffalo 66, it was like might have been peak Richie Hot, technical term. And now he's anyway, definitely he's definitely a train wreck. He he's he's definitely in post hot. Jan Michael he's Vincent trained. is post hot. Yeah. He's yeah he's officially he's entered like post hot. He's two notches down from Gary Busey. <laughs> Hey, Gary Busey's pretty hot, actually. He's on his way. Gary Busey. And I, I love me some Gary Busey. I don't know what you're talking about. But why don't we get to the last story of the day? What do you say? <laughs> let's do this. Let's let's get to our last bump here. This, this is the cheerful part of the show coming up. Our coercive associations being outmoded by technology. On Liberty Tech, we cover stories of emerging tech that suggest the days of coercive associations even large-scale centralized operations may be numbered. All right. So this is this is the last part of the show. This is I try to end all of these is dailies in like an upbeat way, you know. So for the is daily Wednesday, that's Liberty Tech. And do you got the story up there? I don't know if I wrote. Oh yeah. Hey, I don't think I. Yeah, I have I, I have it up. Yeah, I, I have it up. I'm actually looking for something at the moment here, something is relevant it to what to the we're show. Talking about. It is, yes, yes. It's actually, actually related to this topic. Okay, so I'll 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 go over my part before we get to the part from Coin Telegraph. So forget crowdfunding, folks. It's time to talk about blockchain based or ICO funding. So there's a new platform that's called Acorn, and it uh, it essentially aims to create a way for people to create their own ICOs to fund their projects. And this funding technique has a number of advantages, including allowing people to microfund, so they could send you like a few pennies or whatever, uh, eliminating a lot of user fees on current crowd, crowdfunding pa- platforms, and to me, most importantly, creating censor-free sources for funding that won't be at risk to the personal and or political tendencies of the individuals that control and manage the crowdfunding platforms. And yes, that means that horrible people that I disagree with will also be able to take advantage of that. I'm willing to accept that. Accept that. I'm willing to take that risk. Did you find what you were looking for related to this story? I did, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, take it away. 
Uh, it's actually it, it's actually uh, a crowdfunding coin um, called Seed Coin. Uh, I remember I had uh, I just came across my radar uh, a few months ago, and uh, I've kind of been trying to follow what they've what they've been doing. And uh, basically, what they're, they're 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 doing exactly what you're talking about. They were uh, uh, their plan is to allow uh, people to uh, you know fund your project using this uh, seed coin, and it's a, it, it's it's crowdfunding with cryptocurrency. That's pretty awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a couple comments here. Ron Gallons. What's up, Ron? Said, ah, the next false flag attack will be nuclear and blamed on China AI soft. That makes sense. Jacob uh, LaBelle? Jacob? Uh, did I pronounce your name? Last name right? Uh, we're Facebook friends. Uh, nice tie, Paul. This is, by the way, this is my steampunk outfit. This is the Wednesday outfit. I choose the steampunk outfit for this. And Don asks, will the robots worship us like gods? No, we will worship them. Don't you even suggest that they worship us. I Listen, whoever's listening, I'm not associated with Don Chavis, but I know where he lives. <laughs> 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 and uh, Jacob said, evolution? Sure, why not? Why not? And, oh, and, oh, and he said that uh, of, 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 of uh, Drew Barrymore, he said she's still hot. And yes, she's she's like forty one. She's like forty two, turning forty three. Close enough. Oh, Stamos! I, I should have checked Stamos. That would have been a better one. I didn't see your comment there, Jacob. John Stamos would have been a great check. Larry says, "I used five dollars to buy Denticoin. I now own twenty five million Denticoins." <laughs> hey, you know what? You know what? Actually, uh, Denticoin is, uh, is, is something that. I that I, I'm telling you, I've been, I have been looking into it. I'm considering adding it to my portfolio uh, because I think that uh, what I'll say is that I believe that smart contracts today are where Bitcoin was in 2009, 2010, uh, and so on. They're still in their infancy, and I think we're going to see a lot of big things coming out. So. When you have a coin that's targeted at a specific industry for their uh, uh, um, for their smart contracts, um, I think that that's something definitely to look into. Dentacoin is one I was looking into, and INS uh, is another one that I've been uh, that I've been considering adding to my portfolio. INS uh, they are a logistics coin that is geared towards supermarkets. That's interesting, and you're going to see. That, I mean, this stuff is emerging everywhere, so. I mean, the point of this story, why I chose this story and put it in the Liberty Tech. See, this this type of stuff, being able to find ways, like one of the ways that the quote-unquote left is trying to control the quote-unquote right is, is through the use of their social media tools that they control. Well, I, I don't need to go to the government and try to bust up the monopolies and by the way a lot of conservatives are calling for that conservatives conservatives free market conservatives are calling for that just just take that mm. in these these are your people let it let it percolate um, let it percolate right this is more powerful this is far more effective than voting than worrying about left and right and who the heck is doing what in dc you know let, let let's build the tools that really make it more and more difficult for them to actually enforce their insanity upon us. Right. And and, and just to make a, another mention of another coin other than seed coin is coin psyllium. Uh, it's coin S I L I U M coin psyllium. And they're, uh, uh, according to their website, coin psyllium is a venture builder investor and accelerator supporting early stage blockchain technology companies and the digital token economy. So there it is. And Larry said, "This is, he's talking to you, so get ready to be offended. You know Larry Cousins, right? <laughs> so you know. You saw his little Larry! comment there. Of course, he, Larry says, Dope doesn't even know when he's being ripped on. I think you knew he was ripping on Denticoin there. It was pretty obvious. He was hey, still, hey. he was giving you hope. Hey, you know, now. You know, he, it's going to be said. Go ahead. You, you. I, I hope. I hope. That's fine. Bust on the Denta coin, and when Denta coin moves, did. you'll be freaking sorry. You'll be sorry then. Why don't you buy you'll his Denta coins? Five dollars for twenty-five coin. million. Right. I'll take them. 
You know what? That's Larry, the same kind of I'll buy your dental coins like, for five dollars. Heck yes. I will buy yeah. your dent coins. <laughs> I want to. I'm dental. telling you, man. In in the in in the future, that's what's your your medical records are going to be kept on the blockchain, and they're going to be transferred via blockchain tokens. The same thing with email. I mean, if you if you look at uh, you know the the the, the modern uh, the current uh, spam industry, right now, imagine if your email was tied to blockchain technology in order to send an email you had to send the tiniest little insignificant fraction of a digital currency to carry that email off to its recipient now imagine if you're a spammer and you're trying to spam people imagine how much money that would cost you to spam to spam people it'd be bad it'd be much it'd be, right. it'd be bad like you know i'm starting to understand the whole blockchain Pay, pay, pay for play, kind of. Really, if you look at uh, Steemit, which you know I was down on Steemit for a long time. I'm not totally sold on Steemit yet, but I'm trying to dabble. I'm not doing anything over there. I mean, I put stuff up. It's not really working for me, but I blame myself and the Russians. But the idea is, for for Steemit, you have to have so much steam power to do things, and you can earn steam power from people upvoting your content, commenting on your content, or you could pay for steam power. And if you don't have enough steam power, then you can't post or you can only post so much. You, uh, or you can't, you can't upvote. You have to have steam power to do things. And that's, that's what this pay for play kind of blockchain thing is. And that's why if Denticoin is actually going to become it significantly used by folks for their dental records. It might actually be worth something down the road, Larry. But still, if you literally have 25 million dental coins, I know you don't, but let's pretend you do. And you want to sell them for five dollars, dude? I'll buy your 25 million dental coins. I was like, that. That is no problem. I'll hodl that thing. I'll hodl. Heck yeah. <clears throat> Heck yeah. Jacob asked. Jacob asks, what is blockchain? Blockchain, is, Jacob, is basically a digital ledger. Uh, so any kind of transactions get recorded into this uh, digital ledger, and they're there forever. They never go away, and they're decentralized. So, uh, you know, just because uh, one computer or one server goes down, the information is never lost, number one. Uh, number two, they cannot be tampered with. So once it's written into the ledger, it is there. You can't uh, you can't finagle with it. You can't uh, change it. You can't take it away. It's there forever. Yeah. No. No fixing the books. Yeah, that would be the big thing. And, and mm -hmm. I don't know. I I think this is a good time to end the show. We actually went a little bit over, <laughs> but eh, not too much. But still, went a little bit over. Do you have any last comments, remarks, any more things? Because I think next week we might we might we might go another round with the the blue pill red pill thing. I don't know. Maybe not. But maybe. Yeah, we can. Have, I'm I'm up for that. I'm do you up have for any that. Last last remarks. Yeah, uh, Friday night, oh, that's 10 right. p.m. Yes. Eastern, on the Liberty Radio Network. That's L R N dot F M. Uh, you can tune in and you can listen to myself and my co-host Matthew Taylor as we talk about stuff, anything and everything. Sometimes we talk about politics. Sometimes we talk about movies. Sometimes we talk about science and tech. It just depends on what's floating our boat at that particular moment. Uh, we also have uh, several several chat rooms, I guess you can say. They have an IRC chat on LRN uh, as well as a Discord I channel. Participated in them inter on your show. Interact. Right. And we've been, as of recently, we've been kind of moving over more towards Discord uh, than that uh, LRC chat. Going to the Discord server? You got a Discord IRC, server? IRC, I should say. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. They have a Discord yep. server, folks. They've hit the big time. Right. And if you missed it last week, uh, man, you missed a pretty good show because I was flipping out about uh, Commie Kratz. Oh, I missed it. Flipping out about memos. I, I, I actually have it. Shows. I, I have it recorded. Oh, you do? You actually recorded it? I do, it? yeah. I, I did record, it? and uh, I'm, I'm not sure just yet. You gotta post uh, I haven't had time to channel. edit it. Yeah. You edit. I don't oh care my about gosh, I don't have time to edit. Why well, edit? This I take out the commercials edited. because you don't want to hear... You don't oh, want to hear yeah. the, yeah, the yeah, commercials yeah, right. and hear us you deal with the talking over commercials yeah. and nonsense and all that crap, so I take the commercials out. 
Yeah, that's a little time consuming. That sucks. That's not cool. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I will be on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon, and the picture is actually, I think I'm wearing this very outfit in the picture. Uh, if you friend request me, if you're not a friend already, if you friend request me, and you're friending, friend requesting me to, to make sure that you don't miss the show and you get to watch the show, uh, give me a little message and let me know that that's why your friend requesting me. But I do headlines you may have missed. Monday through Thursday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I know, Niz, you don't really get to see it because you're working at that time. But it's a yeah, it's, it's a fantastic show. And uh, working, some working. of the topics end up on the Is Daily Show, but a whole lot more don't end up on the Is Daily Show. And even the ones, like, actually, even the, the sub-story was on the headlines you may have missed show, but it wasn't, we didn't go into it in, in anywhere near the detail that we do on Is Daily. So watch for that tomorrow, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes I start a little early. And tomorrow night, it's Is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander. And we are going to be starting with a shorter leash. And then we're going to let things out a little. We're going to get a longer leash. And then we're going to end with Off the Leash. And that's tomorrow night, same time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. If you like the stories that we covered, you can you find them in more detail by you can get the show notes page by clicking uh, by looking in the deep in the description for the YouTube video, Facebook video, whichever one you're watching. And if you don't want to remember that, then all you got to do is go to iState.tv/i025. And that is the show notes page. And on that note, I'm going to say good night, everybody. Thank you all for joining us here on Is Daily Wednesday with the one true Niz and myself, Paul Gordon. We will see you on Is Daily Wednesday next week, same time, 9:30, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can you can say goodbye, everybody. I give you I give you permission to say good night. Go ahead, Mister Blue Pill. You are Mr. Blue Pill until further <laughs> notice. Go ahead. Lavate, lavate las manos. What's, wait, what's that mean? Wash, wash your hands. Okay. Lavate it's flu season, manos, folks. Everybody. <laughs> right, it's so flu romantic. season. It sounds so <laughs> romantic. Hey, hey, take vitamin C every day. Take vitamin C every day. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.